In this video, I'll show you how you can use smart shapes and iconography to create radio buttons and checkboxes. Okay, let's get started here. I got a message from Charles. Charles asked, hi, Paul, how do you, how do I create the radio button as shown? Now, Charles is referring to one of my previous videos called Make Your Own Radio Button Interaction. I've tried using smart shapes, he says. However, in the advanced interaction, I'm not allowed to select change state to normal or selected. So I'm not entirely sure what Charles has done with his particular project, but I'll take you through how I would set, it, set this up. And if you'd like to watch the, uh, the video, make your own um, radio button interaction, I'll put a link to it right here. And that's essentially the second half of this process. So let's go to Adobe Captivate. I've already created some examples of how you can create your radio buttons, your check boxes. And I've even shown an example, uh, which I'll get to later, that deals with uh, some iconography that you can use. So the first example here is uh, this particular uh, radio button here. And you can do different things to stylize it how you wish. Let's actually change this a little bit. Let's make it a little thicker there, more like a, a radio button you would expect to see. Now, this is simply a, a smart shape. And I've checked off Use as Button. And in this particular instance, I've deleted the inbuilt states of rollover and down states, which is typical for a button, and replace those with a button or sorry, a state that I've called selected. And that simply fills in the inside of the button with a, a darker gray to indicate that, you know, when this button has been selected, it will let the user know that that's what's been selected and the others are not selected. And of course, you can refer to the other video on how to set up the advanced action to make it all work. Similarly, I've done the same for a checkbox. But as I was creating the checkbox, I started thinking, well, a checkbox is not just filled in. Traditionally, a checkbox is more of a check mark itself. So I started thinking about this uh, tool that I've been using recently, and it's uh, something called Font Awesome. Now, to be very clear up front, I received nothing from Font Awesome. I'm not endorsing them, other than the fact that I've been using them recently to create some of the iconography in my courses. So here's an example of how you could use Font Awesome. And just for those that are, are not aware, Font Awesome is available as a free download. It is literally a font that you install on your computer. And there's a number of different ways it can be installed, but for Windows, it's a standard uh, true type font that you install. And once it's installed, you can actually use their cheat sheet, which you see here kind of zoomed in a bit. This cheat sheet will allow you to copy and paste any of the current Font Awesome icons directly into your project. So here's a whole bunch here. And I went through and I found some examples of characters because that's really what they are. And I'm using them in this particular project. So here's my idea for a radio button. You've just got the dark buttons here. I might change that to be a transparent button because dark kind of suggests that they're already selected. But I'll show you what selected looks like in this case. And you can do that just from the drop down menu here. So there's uh, you get a little check mark there. And the same thing for the check boxes. Very similar, except of course it deals with a rounded uh, rectangle or square. So the idea between radio buttons, for those that aren't aware, a radio button is when you select uh, radio button A, B, C, or D, it turns off all the other radio buttons. And for those that were driving in automobiles in the 1970s or early 1980s, They'll know what I'm talking about. When you press your radio station button, all the other radio station buttons popped out or any other uh, radio station buttons uh, that were manually pushed in before would pop out. And that's sort of an interface design that sort of becomes standard. And typically it's a round circle. The check boxes are traditionally a box, like you would be checking off a box in a survey or a form that you were filling out. 
And uh, again, I can show selected just by displaying the check mark there. These are more appropriate for multiple choice, multiple answer questions where you might have more than one answer selected. Whereas the radio button, you would, you would generally use that for a single answer, multiple choice question uh, where there is only one correct answer. So hopefully that helps out, Charles. Uh, again, you can either use uh, characters, and, but you really have to set up the multi-state objects first before you get into your advanced actions and change the state of your objects. You need to create those states first. And my guess is that uh, you've, you've gone ahead or jumped ahead and not created the multiple states needed because they should definitely be able to be changed from within your advanced actions. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.